Welcome to the next um, episode of EPM Chronicles and Confessions. We have Niha Parikh here today. Niha, please introduce yourself on your career journey. Sure, happy to do that. Thanks for having me, Tim. Um, my name is Nihar Parikh, as Tim mentioned, uh, one of the co-founders and chief executive officer at EPMI or EPM Intelligence. And our firm, as the name suggests, focuses on enterprise performance management, specifically with the Oracle Cloud Platform. Um, we started the company back in 2012 and recently have been acquired by Centroid Systems uh, as of May of this year. So uh, we're now EPMI, a Centroid company. And uh, we continue to do the same thing we've always done and is delivering world-class solutions for Hyperion and Cloud EPM. Um, so you mentioned uh, to talk about the journey a bit. So I started my career as a consultant in the planning space. I worked for a company called Curdoc Consulting. Uh, some of the folks that have been in the industry for a while might remember Curdoc. They were acquired by Proficient back in uh, 2010. And um, after that acquisition, um, you know, uh, we, we, uh, we thought, you know what, maybe there's an opening in the marketplace for another boutique EPM provider, specifically out of Houston, which is where most of our uh, folks, folks are now, and um, within the oil and gas space. So um, that's really where we got our, our feet off the ground um, and um, started engaging with customers in that industry and have since grown you know, beyond that to healthcare, high tech, higher ed, um, retail, manufacturing, you name it, we've probably been in that industry. Although our core focus has always been and will be oil and gas, um, we definitely have a lot of experience throughout uh, many different industries in the world. Um, and so now we've got a team um, that uh, is really now capable of delivering the full breadth of Oracle Cloud Platform solutions from Oracle Cloud Infrastructure to ERP, supply chain, HR, as well as now EPM. So that was kind of the missing piece for Centroid. And while Centroid continues to grow and is highly acquisitive, um, we definitely are also growing organically and continuing to see lots of um, growth in within our EPM practice. Oh, fantastic. That's great, great story there. Uh, this is kind of a quirky uh, kind of question. I kind of ask this to everybody because my mom, as, as you know, still thinks I sell computers or whatever. So when you've explained what you do to outsiders of this industry, you know, have you had any funny misconceptions of what actually you do? Yeah, I always think of uh, Chandler being on Friends when he tries <laughs> to describe what he does to his friends. I think he was like in uh, Risk Assurance or something like that. Yeah. But no, I mean, you know, I think what, what's, what's interesting is, um, you know, sometimes people think that, you know, software can turn you into a financial wizard. Um, I don't know if that's necessarily true. While it's a great enabler, I think some of the core skills around understanding how to read a PL, a balance sheet, mm -hmm. a cash flow, or how to use Excel and do a VLOOKUP are still extremely valuable, right? No matter what tools or systems you implement. And so, um, you know, sometimes there's this expectation that technology will magically solve all problems. But as we all know, you know, it's not just technology, it's the people and process that are a core part of that success. So I think just having that, um, uh, that awareness is extremely important when you're thinking about deploying a new system. Fantastic. So you've had many um, challenges, I guess, uh, we've all had in, in our career in EPM. What's been your biggest challenge uh, to date and how have you overcome that? Oh, that's a great question. Um, and uh, a time that, that sometimes gives me nightmares still, but um, uh, I, um, in about, I would say 2014, 2015, uh, given our heavy reliance on the oil and gas economy in Houston, there was a, a massive downturn uh, for oil and gas. And so the $150 price of barrel oil was you know, down to, I think, less than $50 a barrel. And so as a result, these oil and gas companies that were spending money the fast that they could count it, um, you know, we're not spending money anymore. And um, so we had to figure out how to pivot as a firm uh, where our expertise is predominantly oil and gas. And so we kind of went the opposite direction and tried to focus on customers that were um, potentially uh, lower profitability, but higher yeah, yeah. Uh, volume and longer sure, term sure. contracts. So we went to the higher education space, uh, public sector space, where we were able to really create a foundation of stability and predictable revenue, uh, more so at least than the, the ups and downs of the oil and gas industry. And so I think that was definitely a challenging time. And then along that same uh, chronology was the shift from on-premise to cloud applications. Yeah. And so while our history was always in the HFM and planning on premise applications, you know, going to uh, planning and budgeting cloud and a financial close and consolidation in the cloud um, was not just a, um, 
a technology shift, but also a shift in the way that our customers thought about their purchasing and their usage of the same products. And also our consultants that have to kind of shift their skill sets yeah. and become more focused on a new technology. Fantastic. So what have been your biggest success story in your career to date, would you say? Um, I think one of our first um, cloud implementations with with the uh, University of Texas system, mm. um, you know, a, a great, you know, because it's my alma mater was UT Austin. But oh, right. This is the, the Arlington division, but we won't we won't talk about you know the oh. nuances there. But definitely a great because they're one of the earliest adopters of the planning and budgeting cloud service, and you know we thought that it was a fantastic story because their implementation was not years long; it was months. And even beyond that, we, you know, we worked with another customer where we were able to implement things like account reconciliations in six weeks. I, we feel like, you know, a lot of the, the hype and buzz around cloud was actually becoming true. And we could see that, you know, these applications could deliver a lot more functionality a lot quicker. And we had to focus on more of the, the fun, interesting things about the uh -huh. projects, the actual application configuration and talking to the business rather than just setting up servers and keeping services running. Fantastic. You, you, want, you run a, a very successful uh, consultancy. What's the most rewarding aspect of what you do? I think it's just uh, the customer success, you know, witnessing client success and the impact of the solutions that we provide, making their lives easier so they can go home and, you know, hit, hit their kids dance recital rather than, you know, working late night on spreadsheets doing Excel gymnastics, you know, to try to get the report out. I think that's really nice because we see that it really provides an emotional, impactful value rather than just, you know, making processes more efficient. I, I like enjoying, uh, you know, meeting and knowing my customers and my colleagues. They're all my friends as well, um, you know, and so I really appreciate the community that it helps foster. Fantastic. Now, another quirky question, and I asked this question to others. Uh, have you got any funny moments in your career or EPM uh, that you can share with us? Yeah, I don't know if it's funny, but also just kind of, uh, it was definitely a surprise when I, I, I found that, you know, in one of our engagements, the client, our client's uh, CFO was approving their, their planning and budgeting um, uh, units on, from their iPad on a beach. Wow. Um, which kind of goes back to the, the comment around, you know, really making people's lives easier, right, rather than having to take out your laptop and open up a, a web browser or a workbook. I think that's, that's super exciting that, you know, you can kind of, you know, as we all do now, mix a bit of our personal and business life and still be able to get, you know, the same productivity, if not better. Fantastic. So what's been your main inspiration to start your own company? It's not easy to start your own company, especially in, in a climate like this or an industry like what we do. What's been your inspiration to start this? Yeah, so when we started, you know, there was definitely already an incumbent marketplace of partners that that did what we do. Um, this is not a new industry by any means, at least yeah. um, in general, although the cloud is quite new. So what we did is we found, I think, an entry point of where there was an opportunity to where the older firms could not adapt as quickly. But sure. since we were creating a new firm and a bit of an upstart, we would have the opportunity to be cloud first in our mindset and really take some of those leading practices of a new tool set and you know, jump in with both feet. And so, you know, in terms of uh, what was my inspiration, I think it was really just find, identifying the right opportunity with the right incentive that I had. I, I always knew I wanted to go into my business for myself. Um, you know, I've got a great team of partners yeah. and, and uh, colleagues that also were around that helped encourage that. And um, I think that when opportunity, you know, um, kind of aligns with incentive, there's there's a great opportunity for for a successful business. Fantastic. So, uh, as you know, it's a very competitive marketplace with vendors, with different consultancies, even, um, you know, consultants out there. How do you track the changes? How do you keep abreast of everything? Uh, you know, what do you do? Yeah, there's several different ways we do that. Um, you know, we're really active in the virtual online community. So things like LinkedIn, right, is I think a, an extremely valuable tool to be yes. able to understand who your competitors are, who your customers are, and how they see themselves. Um, you know, in the in the social media spheres, but also nothing really replaces in-person engagement. So yes. we are very active in in our uh, industry-specific conferences, in finance user groups. We host several user groups across the nation, from Phoenix to Houston to San Francisco to New York, and uh, we continue to do that because we think that you know this. Even as I look at you right now, I can't really get direct eye contact. So I'm looking at the camera or I'm looking at the screen. <laughs> The only way I can get direct eye contact is by looking at you in person. Of course. And of so, course. so that's definitely something that I think, you know, provides that um, uh, 
uh, that ability to be really in tune with people. And it's really about people, you know, and, and um, I see a lot of the same faces wearing different shirts. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, it's nice to be able to kind of have that continuity and to get that depth of, of, uh, of information, you know, from colleagues. Completely. So, you know, uh, like, like myself, you're very passionate about people coming to the industry or encouraging people or uh, and something like that. What advice would you give for EPM beginners or people who are just start off their careers in, in this industry? Yeah. No, that's a good question. Um, you know, we, we often uh, bring on folks that have um, little to no EPM experience, but yes. have some, you know, general consulting aptitude um, to, to be a part of an organization to get trained up. So when we deal with this, excuse me, what we focus on is a strong finance and accounting background. Right. So um, previous analysts or FP&A directors, or you know, if you've got a CPA, obviously you can read a financial statement. Um, yeah. So folks that have that functional expertise, but also have an aptitude towards technology. Sure. Um, you know, nowadays with you know um, mobile devices and cloud applications, most people are used to having a user experience-driven experience with their applications on the personal side. And I think now that we're finally getting there on the business side, um, it's really finding a few p folks that have that aptitude and that you know, yeah. are willing to embrace technology and evangelize it for our shared customers. Fantastic. So the industry is evolving, uh, you know, very rapidly, especially in the last year or so. Um, where do you see the industry in the next five years in the future? Yeah, so obviously the the hot topic of the day is artificial intelligence, um, whether it be you know just uh, predictive, um, you know analytics and deterministic type of AI or generative AI on the you know text, image, video, um, you know music even side. And so um, I think that um, while Oracle's got a it seems like a, an initial vision of what that would look like for EPM. Mm -hmm. uh, we were just talking I was talking to Matt Bradley and some of the product yeah. leaders at Holly Sankar on the Oracle side for EPM. Um, I think that they've they've got a um, a very holistic approach about how to embed artificial intelligence within existing EPM applications because there's going to be a transitionary period, and you know a time where you know we need to figure out how to leverage the technology without totally disrupting our customers and client client experience experiences and lives. But at the same time, taking advantage of that tool set. So, for instance, an example might be. Um, rather than creating a, a SQL query or a smart view query to run a report, maybe we can speak into Siri or Alexa to have the generative AI, you know, create that query for us in the back end, run yeah. the report, and then produce the text output speech back to us using natural language processing so that you can kind of, you know, eliminate some of those middle steps that are required today uh, with an Excel add-in and, um, you know, a developer that has to build that report. So I, I don't know if that's that's on the roadmap yet, but I definitely think that it's possible given the technology that's available now. Fantastic. I've got Matt coming in on the podcast in a few weeks' time, so I'll ask that question to him anyway. So it'll be great. Thank you so much, Niha, you know, for spending the time and uh, with this podcast and everything. I wish you all the success and keep in touch and let's, let's talk soon. Definitely. Thank Absolutely. you so much. Thank you for the opportunity, Tim. It was really great. Thank you. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye-bye.